Hey everyone, Russell Rells here with CapEx Sales. Hope you're having an awesome day. Had a wonderful question from Boots about pressure decay versus mass flow, and I figured rather than type up an email and send it over to him, I just answered the darn question via video to hopefully save everyone time and contribute to others that have uh, been scratching their heads about the same conundrum, which is, should I use mass flow? Should I use pressure decay? Which one's best? When should I use one versus the other? That's what we're gonna talk about here today. First, let's define mass flow. Mass flow is the amount of flow that it takes to maintain pressure in your part. What does that mean? Well, we pressurize the part, let's say it's a basketball, to 10 PSI. And we monitor the amount of flow through a flow meter to determine how much flow it takes to maintain that pressure in the part. So we do not isolate the part. We continue to have the part connected to the pressure source. That is uh, straight up mass flow. Now there are different types of mass flow. There's differential mass flow. Uh, there's indirect mass flow. There are, any, there are a number of different types of flow technologies that are out there. Um, we are speaking specifically of straight up mass flow. We are measuring the amount of flow that it takes to maintain pressure in the part. Now, pressure decay is we isolate the part with pressure decay. So we are going to pressurize the part and we're going to measure the amount of pre pressure loss over time. So let's say we have a 10 second timer. We're going to measure the pressure loss over that 10 second timer. Okay. So the difference between the two essentially is one has a flow meter and one is isolated. So pressure decay is isolated, mass flow is not. So it's the isolation and the flow meter are really the differences between the two. Which, why should we use one versus the other? Uh, applications for mass flow are typically parts that are, say, large volume or parts that have some level of flexibility to them or when you are testing different part volume. So, so let's say you're testing a tennis ball and you're testing a basketball and you're testing a volleyball and you're testing a beach ball. So as your assembly line is moving along and you're testing all of these varied components with pressure decay, you need to have a calibration for every single one of those components. So a beach ball needs to have its own cycle time and its own calibration. A basketball needs to have its own cycle time and calibration and a tennis ball and a volleyball need to have their own uh, test setup, test timers and calibrations. With mass flow, that is not the case. So with mass flow, what we could do is we could just set everything up to test a beach ball and then test all the other parts or balls in this case. Um, so we could test a tennis ball using the same cycle time, the same test timers, the same settings, assuming that we're testing everything at the same pressure. Uh, we can test everything with the same uh, timers if we've set it up for the largest part. So mass flow is not volume dependent. That's one of the benefits of mass flow technology. So our preference at Cincinnati Test Systems has typically been when we have a component that we're gonna be testing, over and over and over and over again, we prefer to use pressure decay technology. We find it to be very accurate. We've got transducers that go out to you know this many decimal places nowadays because of the technology that's available to us. We've got algorithms that help to uh, smooth out those uh, digits way out there so that they are more useful in evaluating good versus bad with regards to uh, each test. So. With, with our technology or our preference uh, often has been pressure decay. With mass flow, we do a ton of mass flow as well. Um, we're just more, a little more particular when applying mass flow. If given the opportunity, uh, in a car, especially when the customer, when they've got a, a high variation, I always encourage a customer to utilize mass flow technology to um, apply to their application. So. Boots, with regards to your specific application, the question that you had uh, directed from uh, someone at another facility, the reason that you are using or have used mass flow in the past on uh, one of the lines has been because of the high variation in parts. 
Now, your line specifically only has, I think, two different parts that are processed on that line. So with only two different parts processed, pressure decay is a very stable and um, reliable technology to use for that application. That would definitely be the recommendation. Uh, as far as the differences in overall technology, or actually I shouldn't say technology, but overall effectiveness, accuracy, uh, mass flow is as good as pressure decay, you know, depending on how it is set up, how we've sized the flow meter, and uh, how we've set up the test. So really we've got no specifics with regards to uh, the accuracy or the ability to differentiate between a good part and a bad part for your applications in particular. I think you've got like a 10 SCCM uh, reject criteria. So that's um, you know fairly, fairly high uh, reject rate. You get down in the in the half SCCM, uh, some of those lower lower reject rates. It becomes more challenging to apply uh, some of the technologies. But for you specifically, you know, anything over one, we're good with either technology. Um, it's just a matter of what is your preference. Are you only running one part uh, every day? In that case, why not use pressure decay? Um, you know, flow meters have uh, elements inside of them. They've got different things that can be easily uh, corrupted, and you can overrange them. With a transducer, they're very robust, especially the absolute transducers that we're using nowadays. It's uh, you know it's almost impossible to destroy these transducers with the way that they are uh, built and manufactured. So, anyway, hopefully that is helpful for anyone that is interested in pressure decay versus mass flow, kind of understanding the differences between the two. I welcome any questions that y'all might have at Russ at CapExSales.com. That's C A P. E X sales S A L E S dot com regarding leak testing. Until next time, peace out. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.